Hey everyone, and welcome back to this week's video. While I do a bunch of seed starting today, I figured I'd walk you through my process of how I start my seeds. While it's not revolutionary, I know over the years I've established a system that really works well for me and I figured why not share it, especially for anyone who has no idea where to start. First thing I like to do is tally up how many plants I will be needing to get started from my garden plants and set out my soil blocker, nursery pots, water, soil, garden sprayer, and seeds. Even though I won't be using my soil blocker today, I do find it very handy and I will be using it for a lot of my seed starting here in a few weeks. One reason for this is my soil blocker is good for a four to six week window without me having to transplant into bigger pots. So instead of wasting time transplanting in a month's time, I will be using my nursery pots and skip this step altogether. You may notice I will have to transplant my celery here probably sometime this week as it's already been planted for about a month and the roots are starting to spread. So if you are doing any soil blocking, keep that in mind. Once I get everything set aside, I start to fill up all of my nursery pots with soil. I like to pre-moisten my soil to make sure there's no dry spots to reduce my watering needs in the next few days. As I'm filling up, I will label the pots with some painter's tape and a sharpie. I find this super cheap and easy for labeling. If I am soil blocking, I will actually set this tape on the sides of the trays. This year though, I won't have to label as much because I got these colorful nursery pots from Bootstrap Farmer this year, and this way I will only have to label one per color if they are in the same tray, and then that way I know all the plants are the same, which is super handy. Once all the pods are filled up, it's time for the fun part, planting seeds. When planting, I like to set out the seeds on top of the soil first for each nursery pot. Here I have all of my peppers, which all need to be planted one fourth of an inch deep. This is really simple just to sprinkle some soil over the top and then I slightly press down the soil to make sure that everything is laid evenly over the seeds. Then I will give a really good water and I will set all the trays underneath the grow lights. Here on my grow shelf, I have three layers of Barina grow lights. I will make sure everything is linked in the description box below if you're interested. I love these. They interconnect and you can turn off the ones you don't need while having them all connected and plugged in. I also have four by two heat mats, which are so handy and they really help the whole germinating process. One thing to remember when seed starting is to not overthink it. It's important to know your last expectant frost date and plan accordingly, but it's not rocket science and if you can follow basic directions, you're going to do just fine. Here in Kansas Zone 6B, our last frost is right around the 15th of April, so just eight weeks away. Here in about two and a half, three weeks, I will actually be doing my final round of indoor seed starting for the spring and summer garden. And then just here shortly in four weeks, the first things will be going into the garden space, which is the onions. Spring is almost here, guys, and the fun is just beginning. I hope today's video helped you out in your seed starting journey, and I will see you guys next week for more garden adventures. Bye, guys.